Wayne, thank you so much. What a what a special treat, a privilege to talk with the 14-time All-Star, the great Johnny Bench. And Johnny, one of the things Why I've noticed. Keith not doing this. He doesn't like you very much. He said. He asked me to do it yeah, for him. Well, if he hadn't stole all those. You know, picking it out of the dirt and everything else. I'd like him a lot better, too. <laughs> what a defensive player. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's get to it. One of the things, speaking of, of you would like him better, it seems like every single person the second you stepped out of here that was in this stadium was waving to you. So the most basic question I have for you is, what is it like to be Johnny Bench? Many consider you the greatest catcher of all time. Well, I mean, it's really special. I started out, I mean, as a little kid in Oklahoma, just trying to be the best baseball player I could be. I, who knew how it was going to turn out? I, I had the great honor of playing on one of the greatest teams in the history of baseball. But all these people, see, they ask their grandparents, who is that? And they tell them who I am. And then they say, oh, yeah, I've heard of them. So <laughs> then they start selling my Blue Emu or something. I don't know. It is, it is, uh, it's great. What's even more special was be able to go down in the locker room today and see, you know, Frazier and see Bruce and, uh, you know, see some of the guys that you were here and also some of the guys that, remember you and they came up and said hello I mean it was that's what you mean you know it's a legacy to a certain extent and everything else we still love the game it's still special ground ball back to Vargas what a play first base hits out and then we go back to the interview and how quickly we do that sort of thing uh, you know it's special I, I feel bad you know the Reds are just miserable this year we made a trade I was over there talking to Devin in the clocker room and then I walk over and I'm saying with it, say hello to Frazier, and he's lockering right next to him. It's kind of like I think Joe Youngblood got got traded in between a doubleheader and played the played for both teams on the same day. Now it's uh, you know it's uh, you watch it, you love it. You mean you, you wonder what's going to happen with you know how the Mets are going to be? They start off you know and then the pitching uh, you get hurt and then it, and both your catchers go down, so you kind of anticipate that Devin might become a Met. Yeah. And I wish the best for him. He's a great kid. He's suffered some injuries and done stuff. But you pull for guys, you well, know. Well, Johnny, speaking of the Mets, it's 45 years since that incredible NLCS in 73. How you guys you were, that? well, yeah, I remember it well, actually, that Johnny. Uh, <laughs> that meanie. <laughs> You guys were so heavily favored in that series. Did you expect to get a fight, though, from that Mets team? No, I, I don't say that. Not when you had Madlack and Kuzman and Seaver and Gentry and McAndrew and all those guys. You, you know, there was no way. I mean, great pitching gets good guys out, you know. I, I remember hitting the home run in the first game off of Seaver, and here he is in the 10th inning pitching the game. And I hit a home run on his first pitch he threw me. And, but after that, then you guys uh, got us in New York and, you know, we, you know, we were ready to make a comeback, and and uh, it was fun. I mean, it was exciting. The ball club in those days with Bud and Swoboda and all the guys and Jerry. I mean, it was just that's what matchups were all about. But it was tough. It was a tough loss. It was really tough for us to to lose that way. But you know, I still love the game. I still watch it at home, and I still, you know, follow what's going on. I got my I got my players. I'm opening up. I'm opening up the box score every even during the games to follow what everybody else is doing, you know. I, can't, I want to see what Jay's doing. I want to see what Ray Frazier. So, you, I mean, you're mentioning some position players, but as a catcher, what, what catchers do you like watching nowadays? Well, Salvador Perez is, you know, kind of by himself in a lot of ways. What people forget, though, the catching is as good as it's ever been or better. What would they don't do is they, if they don't hit home runs or they don't have drive in runs and lead the league in RBIs, we'll never say they're great. But the catching and the throwing, these guys are phenomenal. They block the balls. They do it. They're more mobile. They're much better shaped. Uh, I mean, rounds of shape, and that's what we had back then. And, but we never did anything. Had we had the chance to do it, it wouldn't have changed. We would have been just as great then because we'd have been able to utilize it. But I, it's still a great game. People want to know how it's changed. And I said, oh, we've changed. Our opinion has changed. The game really hasn't changed that much. You know, they're trying to protect the, the catcher. That they should do. The infielders, they should knock them in the outfield. <laughs> Well, Johnny, you know, it, it's it's so interesting when you talk about the catchers nowadays and, and the evolution of the game. One of the things that we noticed when we were just around the park here is in the Reds Hall of Fame, there's a great video of you talking about your dad teaching you to throw and how you really had to focus on gripping those seams and pulling down on the seams to keep that ball Good. to You're get listening. the correct spin. What exactly was that process for you learning that with your father? And, and is that something that you try and teach players that you still talk to nowadays? 
Well, I wanted to be a catcher, so he said, this is what you have to do. So I went out and practiced it. I threw it, 100 and I threw it 200 feet. I didn't throw it at the second base at 120. I threw it 200 feet. I developed this arm muscle. Then I worked constantly on transfer. Every time I played catch, I caught the ball and caught it, turned it, caught it, turned it, tried to get it to where that thing was just automatic, and I got it across the seams not most of the time. But the transfer was the key. Fly ball, right center field. Back goes Bruce. It's off the wall. Can this... Come on, we're going to throw him out at the plate. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Give me a glove. Oh, my God. That would have been an out at home. What the? <laughs> I got to tell you, Johnny, you were talking about uh, you want to keep Hernandez down here. You might have to kick Wayne Randazzo out of the play-by-play no, no, play no, booth no, through no, the rest no. of the game. These guys, these guys are really good there. And I love it because when I get to, you know, when I hear New York fans brag about those guys and the way they call the game, and they're passionate, you know, and they're knowledgeable. That's great. I love it. I, I really enjoyed being in the booth. I just don't think I can make nine innings. <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't want to catch nine innings. I don't want to squat for any time. And I just want I just want to watch the game and enjoy it. And, and these guys are professionals and they and what they've done and how they've done it and you know they 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 love the game and that's why every day they come out to the ballpark prepared to do it but I always I hated the production meetings you know when somebody sits down and tell you this is how the game going to go and said they haven't thrown a pitch I mean the great thing every time we come to the ballpark they're going to start all over with a pitch first pitch may go out of the ballpark or the guy may strike out 15 we don't know how it's going to happen and that's why we love it what do you think Johnny about catchers nowadays not calling their own games and and managers pitching coaches calling it from the bench well they don't know how to kill call pitches as a rule you know they always want to blame the catcher for it's it's a location man these guys aren't throwing it where you want it anyway and the, and the thing is there's a there's a system you we would walk guys if they were hot we'd walk and put them on because we couldn't get them out so you pitch to the guy in the on deck circle so I mean I don't I don't see I don't know if your catcher's looking I haven't watched him our guy really doesn't do it, but you know that started with Roger Craig. Roger lost 20 games, and then all of a sudden the next year he wanted to call all the pitches. Hell, he didn't know where he was throwing it anyway. So, Johnny, the last question I want to ask you, as Scooter Jeanette flies out here and Ahmed Rosario calls off Cespedes, so two away. But the last question I wanted to ask you: that that big red machine team, that great 70s team, do you think that the pitchers? were overlooked on that team based on the grade eight and, and that position player lineup that you guys had? We led the league in ERA two years in a row. So, I mean, just think about it. What I feel bad about is Jack Billingham winning 19 games twice. And he probably got cut, you know, here in Cincinnati. And a guy like that could have made 25, 20 or 25 million dollars. I think that's the saddest thing of all. No, we had Gullet. Nobody, nobody disrespected our guys. Gullet, Nolan. You know, Zachary from Freddie Norman. I mean, it was just, they were good. And the bullpen, of course, with, you know, Pedro. And I, I had dinner with Raleigh Eastwick uh, Saturday night. Will McEnany, I want to hope he's all right because he had a little heart problem. He's down in uh, Florida, down in, in uh, Jupiter and West Palm. So I just hope those guys are all right. I mean, it was we're blessed that we had the ability to play together and the, lo the longevity we had in playing together. And wherever you go, people say, I'm a Mets fan. But, uh, boy, I respected you guys. Then they named the lineup. The great eight, yeah, we right. called it. And it was we, we were lucky because we played in there where it is. And I, and I, quite honestly, I thought about making a comeback, but I pulled a muscle vacuuming, <laughs> and it's been a setback. <laughs> Johnny, I don't think there's a better way to end this interview. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, we go. That was Home such, would be such a, great a way special to treat. Interview. Well, for you. The wind up, for the you. Pitch. Maybe not oh, for us. Swung out and missed it. Johnny Damn. Bench, the Hall of Famer, a Hall of Fame interview right there. Wayne, Keith, back up to you. <laughs>